Hello and welcome to ClickSense and for that matter ClickView tips and tricks session. In this session we're going to create a fiscal calendar because we've been asked by many students over the time how to create a fiscal calendar. We do teach how to create a master calendar but there are times when you do need to have a fiscal calendar in addition. So as usual, we're going to divide sections of the script and then explain you step by step how to create it so that when you create your own script, you will be confident that's going to work for your requirements. So with that said, let's dive in. I have created few variables up front. One is the fiscal year start month. I'm assuming that it is month of May. But depending on the month for your company, you can change that number. Then we have the date range, which is the start date and the end date. Now, since I'm using the Northwind sample database and the data exists between January 1996 through the end of 98, I had to play a little bit of trick to create the start and end. As you see, start is January 1996 and the end is December 1998. Again, you can change those two dates based on your own requirement. With that said, I'm going to straight dive into the master calendar section and start creating the script. So first, let's create various sections so that we have a clear map of what we are creating. So as usual, I'm going to create some comments. So the first step is to create records for the fiscal calendar. Okay, once that is done, the next step is going to be to create fiscal month and fiscal year. These are two very important fields. Okay, once that is done, then using fiscal month, we can create fiscal quarter and fiscal month name. And that's pretty much it. At that point, our fiscal calendar will be ready. So let's start with the first step. Let's begin with actually the name of the calendar. So let's call it fiscal calendar. And let's create the records for the calendar first. So we're going to use load statement and I'm going to use date function and I'll explain the syntax in a second. We'll start with we start date in dollar sign expansion. So that's the variable I've created. You see here in the main section, we start date and we end date. So we'll use we start date plus iter number. Iter number just allows you to have sequential number within the while loop. But since iter number starts at one, we're going to subtract one from our equation. And let's call it order date. And that's all we need for this. In order to generate this, we're going to use auto generate. Again, if you remember, while creating master calendar, we use auto generate keyword. Here we're just generating one row at a time and then we're going to have a while loop so while this condition is true it's less than or equal to our end date so in dollar expansion the end date
Okay, so that should generate a fiscal calendar with series of order dates. Now next we're going to create two new fields, fiscal month and fiscal year using the order date. So here we're going to create a preceding load statement using load asterisk because we want to include the order date colon. Now the trick here is in order to create fiscal month we're going to use a function called mod. And mod is a function that gives the remainder of a division. So we take the current order date month and subtract the fiscal start month and then divide that by 12 because there are 12 months and then we'll add one to the remainder to get the fiscal month. So the statement will be like this. So we want the month of the order date and then we subtract the fiscal year start month. So if we go back to the main section, this is the variable, which is five in this case. We're going to subtract that using dollar sign expansion. And then comma 12, we're going to divide that by 12. And whatever the remainder is, we're going to add one to that to get fiscal month. Now the next field is fiscal year. And for that, we're going to use a function called year name. Now the year name function requires the date first, which will be order date, comma, zero, which indicates that it is the current year. Then we'll have the fiscal year month, which is five in our case. Whenever we use that, it will then create a fiscal year that shows last year hyphen current year. So the syntax will be order date, comma, zero, comma, again, dollar sign expansion with fiscal year start month. And that's our fiscal year. So now we created fiscal month and a fiscal year. The next is then to create fiscal quarter and month name. So we're going to create another preceding load, load statement, star comma, since we want to include all the fields that have already been loaded in this table. And for the quarter, we're going to use a dual function because we want to use quarter with Q while displaying value, but use numeric value in calculations. So that's what dual function does. It allows us to use same field, but based on the context, click stands will use either the textual value or numeric value. So the dual function has textual value format, comma, numeric value format. In this case, the textual value will be Q, and then M percent to concatenate, and then we're going to use the ceiling function. And within that, we're going to use fiscal month, divided by three because when you divide month by three, it always gives you quarter for that particular month. Comma, now for the numeric value, which we'll just use the ceiling part of the expression. And then we'll call it fiscal quarter. Now for the month name, we're going to use dual function again, and let's use text around to ensure that it will be represented in text. And then we're going to use a function called month name. And within that, we'll use order date. 
And then again, just press command for the numeric value as this call month name. Now, here's the little caveat. When you use month name function, it always gives you the month name with the year prefix. So we just want to show April. We're going to use subfield function around that to just show the month name. So let's use subfield. And the separator is going to be space. And we want the first part. And that's it. So this is our fiscal calendar. Keep with facts because that's our the fact table. There you go. That's our script. We first created calendar records, then use mod function along with year month to create fiscal month and fiscal year. Now using another preceding load, we created fiscal quarter using the still function and then using combination of month name and subfield we created fiscal month name field so let's save this and let's see how it goes when we reload and there we go so script worked fine so now let's look at the data model in data model viewer and here's my fiscal calendar so i'm going to highlight that preview and let's make sure the order date and that looks good so if you look at the fiscal calendar april of 1997 showing fiscal month of 12. so i have my python running here i'm using that as my calculator so if you remember the calculation for the fiscal month is using mod function we subtract the fiscal start month from the month of the order date in this case month of order date is four and our fiscal month starts in may so that's five so four minus five is minus one so if i do minus one percent 12 that gives me 11 and if i add one to it which is what i have in my script it gives me fiscal month of 12 which is true since the year starts in may fiscal year also shows 1996 1997 fiscal quarter is fourth indeed it is fourth quarter for the fiscal year and the fiscal month name is april so our calendar is working perfectly so that's all for this i hope that this help you understand how to create a fiscal calendar for your own requirements. And again, if you like this video, we would love to have you join our academy where we continuously teach to improve your click skill because our aim is to make you click rockstar. So in case if you're wondering why you want to become a member, there are a plethora of benefits, starting with the fact that we teach from our own practical real world experience by working in the trenches we constantly share knowledge all of our tutorials and courses provide lots of quizzes challenges then you we also are creating a community of like-minded clickies who you can join and interact with so we all can learn together in our own community and you can track your learning progress since you can watch lessons at your speed and you can bookmark interesting lessons and review them later and last but not least is that we regularly update content and if you look at our academy you'll see we already have a ton of content and we keep adding content every week so we hope that you will join our academy so with that thank you for watching and I'll see you in the future.